No, this is rubbish. Don't. Okay, I'm afraid I'm just gonna have to pull the plug on this little dance and uh, move on. But thanks for. Uh... Oh yeah, that's better. Well, that is what we came to see. I'm gonna take back everything I said. Let's have uh, one more for luck. Thanks, guys. Jobs are good. And since mini bikes have been outlawed in the U.S., only outlaws now have mini bikes. Crazy 15-year-olds. And how better to top off a blind date with danger than with a tumbling routine? Great landing there, sunshine. Extreme. We're at this spooky old abandoned quarry somewhere in the southern U.S. state of Indiana. Feels like I'm going to come across the members of a group of ghost-hunting cartoon characters any minute now. Mitch is ready for his second jump. He's got a strange tingling sensation that something's not quite right. Don't worry though, that's just pins and needles from being squashed onto that tiny bike. Oh dear, he should have listened to those instincts because this time his landing isn't quite so smooth. Maybe now he'll give up this madness, or at least buy a crash helmet. But he's okay. And ready for more. This guy really is a trier. He just ends up groveling around in the dirt. Like football, car racing is a sport of statistics, whether you keep track of them or you are one. The reason there are 50,000 hyperactive fans in the stands every weekend is because they love it when drivers set new records. Speed records, track records, points records, consecutive wins records. They're all great. But there's one record that stands head and shoulders above the rest. And I'm not talking about Cliff at Christmas. I'm talking about the only one we hear at When Sport Goes Bad really care about, for rolling a car the most times. Meet Stefan Orsacci. He's got the look of a champion roller in the making. The current record is seven and a half turns. Can this reckless road warrior beat it? He comes around the well-oiled turn at 140, and there he goes. It's an incredible display of recklessness and bad driving, but did he break the record? One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, seven and a half. Will he get to eight? He'll have to settle for seven and three quarters, but that is enough. Stefan Orsacci has set a new world record. It's his greatest achievement. Let's just hope they can get him out before his car blows up. He's okay. Stefan, you just did seven and three quarter turns. <laughs> What have you got to say to your fans? And you could quote him on that. Welcome to Fountain Valley, California for the Gordon Bennett Cup Race, one of the most prestigious events in ballooning. It's a celebration of the bliss of hot air ballooning. Lofting effortlessly upon a gentle breeze, laughing at your friends below. It looks like one of the balloons is taking off right now. Or maybe not exactly taking off. That's more like dragging off. Oh man, that's one bad balloonist. Heads up, people, heads up! Okay, we're experiencing a bit of turbulence, but look! The balloon's finally up without anyone driving. There's, a, there's no one in charge. What, what happened to the pilot? It's a tough lesson to learn, is this, but if you have to lose your £30,000 balloon in order to learn to wear your seatbelt, then I think it's worth it, don't you? Bye-bye, expensive balloon, bye-bye!
We love hearing from the dedicated fans of this show. Your clips help make each show possible. Sometimes it's hard to tell, though, when a tape crosses the line from entertainment to a cry for help. I can kick myself in the head. You know when you catch fire? Yeah, you could stop, drop and roll, but that's for wimps. If you're going to go down in flames, do it the way hotshot Ted Batchelor does it. Now there's a man with lots of style. You could say he's got style to burn. Yeah! Let this be a lesson to you guys out there. Never iron your suit whilst you're wearing it. Ted learned the hard way. Now let's really turn up the heat with some California girls. We can argue all day about which one of these girls is the foxiest, but only one can be the fastest. It's time for the bikini 100-yard dash. In lane number one is Heather. Lane number two is Marisa. In lane number three, it's Janelle. Next to her is Christy and Carrie. And finally, Vanessa. Rosalind down at the starting line. What do you make of the field? I think they're hot. OK, this is pretty disorientating. I'm not really used to seeing girls running this fast towards me. Uh, usually I get the view from the other direction. It's kind of uh, hypnotic. Uh, but when the sand settled, our winner was Heather. The winner of the 100-yard sand dash is Heather. Give her a round of applause, please. You could call her the 100-yard dish. A crazy love story. Looking for a great first eight activity and your bowling ball needs oiling? Do what suave ladies' man Oscar Mathers did. Throw your date out of a plane. But it's a perfectly safe pastime if you know what you're doing. Let's see what he sees. His liftoff was smooth. He remembered his skis, but forgot to look where he was going. Yeah. Good job we can't feel what he feels. What do we do? The race has just started. Are these intrepid runners of the tough guy race in the Midlands? A gruelling all-day charity event that makes the Ironman triathlon look like a church picnic. First, the country miles. It's an eight-mile jog over a cow pasture with enough giant rocks and rabbit holes to make you fall flat on your face. That's all warm-up for the killing fields. The Tough Guy Racer's world-famous gigantic obstacle course. If you think you've got what it takes, they run the race every January and July. I love this sport so much, I'm petitioning for it to be included in the 2012 Olympics. I mean, snooker's going to be in Beijing, so why can't we have the Tough Guy Race? It's far more of a sport than ping-pong or any of that nonsense. Anyone with me? Anyone? OK, fine. I'll just have to fake all the signatures then. You'll be sorry when you watch Jeff Capes getting gold in 2012. Headstrong vandals getting ready to take revenge on the bricks who killed their father. You see, he was a builder who didn't play by the rules, never wearing a hard hat. One day, his mate dropped some masonry from the scaffold and, bang, he bought it, literally. Now his sons are forced to seek vengeance for all eternity. Revving and rolling, right bang into the top spot, proving the old adage that you shouldn't build motorcycle testing tracks near motorways. Some planning departments just never learn. Thankfully, the driver's OK. Well, kind of. Keep thinking those good thoughts, my friends. I know I will. I'll see you later.